Well, hey there, Diet Disruptors. Carrie here, and we have another episode on our podcast, and it's literally my favorite kind. The, you know, I love being able to chat with y'all and give you guys all the different things that are in my head, but really, I love talking to people, and this woman has a story to share. So Jen is here. Jen, say hi to everyone. Hey. I am. <laughs> Super excited that you're here. Jen is actually a client of ours. She is also a professional working woman, a business consultant. Uh, we were actually just talking before we got started, and she's had her own podcast. And it's always so interesting to me, Jen, when we have, you know, professional women that are successful in their lives with their family and all of that. And then there's a part of us that's hurting so much that most people don't see and don't really understand. I remember when I was a consultant and I would either get up on stage and talk or present, it was always, I actually would weigh myself on the scale before any presentation to determine if I was like worthy enough of being up there, even though I knew a lot of stuff and I knew I could help people. And so it's so interesting. I love having professional women like you on. So uh, talk to me, Jen, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from and how you found us here at Disruptive Nutrition. Um, I, like you said, I'm a business consultant. I've been in the online world for gosh, 10, 12 years. I can't, I lose count. Yeah, I uh, do too. <laughs> it was when COVID hit, like everyone was like, oh, I have to work from home. And I'm like, I, nothing in my life really changed. I agreed. Uh, yep. So it was, that was really good. Uh, where I'm from is I'm originally from a small town in Ohio. I just came back from a trip there, but I grew up in California and then I married a military man. And from there we lived all over. <laughs> yes. We just left Florida. We were in Florida for 10 years and we retired to North Carolina, which most people look at us cross-eyed and go, what? Most people retired to Florida, but we lived there for long enough and it's a great place to visit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Got it. And then, you know, a new, a new location to be able to explore and, and live is always fun. And it's funny that you brought that up about the professional women, because I actually had a client cancel a contract with me because she felt I was overweight and that women stop it right now. Oh, women who are overweight should not coach. And she asked for a refund. I would have been like, here is your money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for showing me who you are. Uh, but wow. It was, it was really, really hurtful. Of course. I, because I've been struggling since, well, I was always really thin. I use that word like with air quotes, but like yeah. not healthy, but thin all my life. But I remember like through this process, I remember my very first diet I went on, I was 12. Wow. I remember I was in middle school and a friend and I went to the beach and we decided that we needed to look like everyone else. Yeah. And, you know, we weren't taking into consideration height and we weren't taking in consideration anything else other than we start taking diet pills yep at yep. 12 well and you know it's so interesting because our society puts front and center a certain body type that becomes what we're aspiring to be and it's changed when you think about how body image has changed in terms of who we aspire to look like or who culture tells us to you know in the days of Marilyn Monroe she had a totally different body figure and and, and compared to Twiggy who you know ended up being another type of a or Kate Moss who mm -hmm. was you know around the time that I was younger too and I remember Kate Moss actually said nothing tastes as good as skinny feels Mm -hmm. And then that became the norm, right? And so we keep chasing what culture tells us is this perfect body, but how is it that we can all chase that same thing? Right. Well, right. And that was really what I spent my life chasing because mm -hmm. also upon reflection, my mom growing up in the eighties with a mom who was raised in the Midwest. So, you know, white bread and butter was on every table. <laughs> yeah. <and every> <laughs> eating with it, whether you wanted it or not, you got a piece slapped on your thing. And so there were certain things we ate who moved to California and was in nursing school and discovered, you know, food can be healthy for you. Mm. It went on a health kick and which completely like threw everything off as far as just our family dynamics. And then 
Why? Because, she, because you oh, were doing certain things that nobody else was going to do. Right. And yeah. she was cooking things that nobody wanted to eat because it yeah. wasn't covered in gravy and it wasn't like full of yeah. butter and all this stuff. And then watched her too, because she struggled with weight watched her go on diet after diet, the Hollywood diet. I remember she went on this all fruit diet. And I remember even today, the smell of papaya makes me want to throw up. Isn't that amazing? We have so much history around our bodies, around food. And food is something that we have to engage in every single day. When we think about other types of, you know, attachments to uh, vices, if you will, if it's alcohol, drugs, shopping, gambling, things like that, you could avoid those, those, those areas of your life, right? We can't avoid the food. And so it's interesting how a smell can trigger a memory. And yet we still, we can't just walk away from saying, I'm, you know, I'm never going in a casino again. Well, I'm never eating again. Right. And we don't have a lot of that self-awareness about where it's all coming from. I think it really just contributed to my, just the, the changes of the way we ate, mm-hmm. and just watching her go on diet after diet. And then me again, emulating that at 12. Yeah. I mean, there's no, and when I look at pictures of myself then I'm like, what was I worried about? Like I, there was nothing wrong. With me. <laughs> you know, Jen, that is a, why I always say when people will come to us and say, I just need to lose X amount of weight. And I say, why that much weight? And they said, well, that's when I felt really good before. And I'm like, were you on a diet then? And the answer is almost always yes. So you were fighting for something then. It wasn't good enough, right? We were looking for something else. So maybe it doesn't come from this number. Maybe it's something that's going on inside that we have to actually deal with first. Is that what you right. found? Yeah. And that, and I'll, um, yeah, because I get those good, ah, sorry, get the words out. Uh, the one thing, cause I wrote down like the one thing that really shifted for, I mean, there's so many things that shifted for me. Um, but the one thing that shifted for me was it went from losing weight to get healthy. Like I had it on my head. I won't get healthy until I lose weight. So yes. my focus was losing weight. Then healthy would come. Yes. Would yes. But the switch was my body will shed the weight when I am healthy. Yeah. So that became the focus. So I stepped away from the scale. Like I said, I had a client that rejected me because of my weight. It was part of the reason why I stopped doing my podcast because I also did a video component and I'm starting to feel because COVID COVID was weird. I mean, it didn't change my life, but it like changed how I exercised. I couldn't mm-hmm. go to the gym anymore. I, my husband was afraid to let me outside. I couldn't, cause I used to run. I would run 10 Ks. I ran a 10 K on Thanksgiving and came home and cooked a, cooked a full meal for people. <laughs> like That's how dedicated I was to running. And then, you know, all the stuff I gained weight, I, I lost my brother and my mother within six months, wow. which just led to me you know, self-medicating and Netflix and yep. popcorn and yep. candy and all the stuff that I yep. thought would feed my soul, but wasn't feeding mm-hmm. my soul Right. to right. where I came to you guys when I saw, I can't, I don't even know how I signed up for one of you guys. I thought you guys were somebody else and I kept ignoring it because I had yeah. encountered this other group and I, and then I saw your free, your challenge and I love challenges. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do that and give them one chance and see what happens. And oh, you gave us one chance. We better have done <laughs> we better have done well. Oh my gosh. It blew my mind because even the first day of the challenge, I thought, well, I'm just going to put this to the test. And I just started, I didn't, wasn't eating correct, but I was like, I found some PFC three like guidelines online. And I just was like, I'm just going to try this. And I couldn't believe how much better I felt just in that five days that I wasn't even following. Like, yeah the the protocol but I it just that shift and the freedom and because part of it too is that you give people freedom mm-hmm. and that sounds weird because you can't give people freedom but you gave me the freedom permission it was like permission to plan permission to eat this way per, like I felt like all these doors were unlocking for me wow. because I had closed them saying, I can't do that. That's not the way you diet. That's not the way that I'm supposed to do this. This is, you know, I had all these 
Yes. You know, that's interesting because when I ask women how many years they've been dieting, obsessing about food in their body, I mean, you were what, 40? When By the Uh, time you came to us? Like like 40 years? uh, Yeah, I've been dieting for 40 years. 40 years, right. That's right. And so when you think about every single diet, there's another rule that they just tell you. We don't really question. They just tell you. I I remember a friend of mine who's Catholic and we were out one night and it was a Friday night and she said, well, I can't eat meat. And I said, why? And she said, I don't know. (laughs) It was really funny. And so I was like, well, if you're going to like do something, don't you think you should understand why you're doing it? And she's like, that's a really good question. Like, and I think the dieting world has just closed doors. You're not allowed to have carbs. You're not allowed to have fat. You have to, you can't eat after eight o'clock. Like all these rules that have gotten us very confused. And you're right. Like we talk about this concept of like, just understanding what your body needs, trusting us a little bit in the beginning. But as soon as you do, you start to see, oh, wait, all those things that I have been holding so true, maybe they're not. That's pretty incredible. It is, I mean, even follow me, like I took a while to have my first, um, I keep calling them celebration meals, and that's what my husband calls them. <laughs> appreciation. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you call it whatever you want. It's not like, it feels like a celebration. Yeah. But I, I took a while, A, because I knew how much better I felt, because I was dealing with chronic pain. I would, my, I was having horrible back spasms where I couldn't work out. I couldn't even walk at times. I haven't had any, any back spasms. I, wow. I haven't taken any and acids or any medication because I had horrible acid reflux. Like I had to sleep sitting up. Um, I had trouble sleeping a because I was sleeping sitting up and the acid reflux. Um, my allergies, my nasal sinus allergies were bad. Um, they're still not great because I'm in North Carolina in the middle of mm-hmm. you know flowers that bloom. Yeah. But I stopped taking my allergy medication because when I got the CGN. I realized that was causing my blood sugar because my, I felt like I was having an earthquake. Like that's what it looked like. Wow. And And you're, and you realized that your allergy medication was causing some of that. Yeah. Well, and I, I looked it up online and it said, if you're predisposed to diabetes, which I was, I was pre-diabetic when I started Mm -hmm. the program, then it can cause your, your blood sugar to spike. And I was like, so I stopped doing that. We don't, we don't realize how debilitating our blood sugar dysregulation is in every single aspect of our life. And by the time you get the pre-diabetes, I am so urgent for women. And and I hope that you see now why. Oh, absolutely. It's scary. Yeah. Well, it was funny because my dad is diabetic and he was looking at my numbers and he was like, these numbers are really high. I said, dad, you take, you do a blood fasting, like check. This is me. Like eating. I just ate something like 30 minutes ago. (laughs) He was like, whoa. Cause I was like, you know, in the, in the range, in the normal range, (laughs) in the normal range. And with having the CGM, I just actually took it off my last one off yesterday. Um, it was really good for me to see caffeine. There's certain foods, dense carbs. Like I just need to know that if I want to have, you know, added in as, as I do it as part of my carb, not my whole carb, because I know that it's going to, you know, so just really learn. Yeah. You're Uh, tweaking it for yourself. And by being, because you're pre-diabetic, you're even more sensitive. But what's so crazy, Jen, is that 75% of people are insulin resistant, pre-diabetic or diabetic. That's why so many people are like jumping on, you know, quote unquote, weight loss drugs or, or Ozempic and Wagovi. And I just think, but what if there was another way that wasn't about dieting and exercise and was still allowing you to eat everything that you really want to eat and learning more about yourself? Right. Well, and that's the conversation I have with my dad because he was like, well, I just take drugs and I get to eat whatever I want as he's like shoveling candy in his mouth. Right. And I'm like, but you have liver, you know, you have kidney disease. Now you have all these things that are side effect of the drugs that you're taking to monitor something you could have done with diet. And and it's not reversing diabetes. It's just, it's just squelching the blood sugar, which is throwing everything off in your body because it's not a natural way to be able to control your blood sugar. So yeah, I, I mean, I get it. So, so how, when did you actually start? Do you remember what day you started your prep week? Uh, it was in March. Yep. Yep. And um, so as yep. we're thinking about March, April, May, June, July, I mean, it's been only a few months. You, you dieted for more than 40 years. 
would you say that you have food freedom? Oh, absolutely. I just came back from vacation. Yeah. (laughs) I need to post in the group, like the foods that I took with me, because I literally have, you know, you have like your big suitcase and then you have like the small (laughs) overhead part. Well, that it's become my, my food suitcase. (laughs) That's so funny. And to make it clear, it's not because you brought all your food on vacation and no. said, I have to eat this special food on vacation. Let's be clear. Right. Tell right, us right. what you did. Like it was because it was a road trip and yep. I knew that we would be making stops. I knew that there, and I even talked to my family because we're traveling as a huge family. I said, look, we had that sounds talk- kind of miserable, but okay. Keep going. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> there was moments because my grandson is two uh that it was like okay we're just gonna <laughs> sit here and just and enjoy the music loudly uh yeah. but it was great because there's so much laughter and there's so much yeah like, that's I've just gotten a lot of personal freedom because I'm not worried about what I look like I'm not worried about you know my food my blood sugars and going all over the place because we stopped at a gas station and I grabbed some I love sour candy or uh, love I love candy. combos cheddar oh, cheese yeah. combos <laughs> That's my gas station. I mean, I haven't had it in forever, but that used to be my thing. Yep. And, and I wasn't doing that because my blood sugar was regulated and I'm not even like hungry. Like sour candy doesn't even like, it doesn't because other things are fulfilling that like my cravings went away, like right away. But anyways, yeah, I packed this big suitcase because a, we're staying Airbnbs and I wanted to make sure that I had my stuff that I, I, you know, I wasn't going out of my way to spend extra money on, on, on garbage. Right. Right. And which worked out great because we went to some museums and when it was time for me to eat, I just sat in a little corner and I had my, my meal and everybody was good. And most of the time, everybody kind of fell in sync. We're, we're pretty much eating around the same times, which is good. I find that when you're on vacation, let's think about it. Like, I know we eat five, six, sometimes seven times a day. It depends how long you're awake. And a lot of people are like, I can't do that. I'm like, listen, if you're doing a breakfast, and lunch, and dinner with everybody else, and you are always ready to eat satisfied, right? So that's sort of the way that you're looking at food. In three hours, you're naturally going to be hungry again. Grab a protein bar if you have to, right? You're not not yeah. eating with people. You're just filling in the gaps with another meal. Right. And it's so flexible to be able to have a half meal because our timing and when we're going to eat, um, we even and had you're listening to your body because right. you're just hungry. <laughs> and my son was even, he really wanted to go to this fun chicken restaurant and it was all, I looked at their menu and there was not a salad. Like it reminded me of the story you tell about the pizza when you went in, it was just like pizza. There was no salads. There was no, and nope. so it was just like, not literally... even like pr- real protein on the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah pizzas we have pizza once a week and I it's been a challenge because at first I was like what do I do and then I'm looking at the boxes now and I'm like <laughs> even anyways uh so no, he wanted- do. I do pizza once a week you just like I love myself a garden veggie pizza with chicken on it and I don't know yeah it. well that's where I made I make my own pizza now because everybody else has pepperoni and even if I got turkey pepperoni the amount that you have to eat in order to make it be like a complete protein For protein yeah I have yeah. to eat like a whole package <laughs> it's like yeah no sometimes where honestly your body Jen is just getting healthier and healthier and healthier and remember you don't have to have that perfection you could be like right, right? Right. Well, but if you have it there and you're like, I, I can do it myself, I'm going to like it better and I'm going to feel better, then right. that's a great choice too. It's just, it's always yeah. around that intentionality. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I, I have a gluten-free crust now because I, it's gluten was probably, I think it was that and regular coffee because I drink the low acid now. There's just a combination of things yes. and dairy was what was causing my acid reflux. Isn't that it, amazing it, that you know that? And you are now your own nutrition coach, basically. Right. And the really crazy thing is, and it sounds, it's not going to sound crazy to you. It was crazy to me is when I eat those things because I'm having an appreciation meal or it was, I had no control because sometimes you're in situations where you don't have control of what is put in it. I don't have, it's like, I don't rebound. Like in a regular diet, I would rebound Mm -hmm. and I'd be like, Oh, wait, now I have to start over, but now mm-hmm. I have to start on a Monday and I can't start on a Tuesday because people told me you can't start diet. It's not good <laughs> All those start. doors that close. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think, it's, you know, I, like, love, I, I love the philosophy of eating every three hours because it isn't just about feeling your body every three hours, but it's about this sense of like, I can't go backwards. 
I can't allow guilt to set in. I just, I start over in three hours. And it's like, if, even if like I got into an argument with my spouse or, you know, like I didn't treat my kids as, as well as I could have or whatever it was, it just, do you believe that? It, like for me, it permeates my, in my life now, the concept of I, I'll just do better as I move forward. I'll just keep doing better instead of re regretting the past. Exactly. And that, that's where I think all those doors were open now because it gave me, and it just, it's such a simple thing just to say, even if, oh, I blew it, or I just had, you know, more than I wanted to, or I should, you know, I don't like yep. the word should, but should have yeah. three hours. I just started again. Slate in three hours yep. and my, in my body now, cause it's what been five, almost five months. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't get any acid reflux. I had fried chicken and French fries no acid reflux that never would have happened before right and i didn't feel full and i didn't feel bloated what does that say about the relationship now between you and your body it's it's my body is getting healthy yeah and so i'm i've let go of like the inflammation it's like when i took my before and after pictures the coach i was working with coach shannon basically said you had that has to have been an overabundance of inflammation in your body like I was just inflamed because I just kept feeling, it's like that, it's a cycle. You feel bad, you feel tired, you over-caffeinate, you go to Starbucks, you get a, stick, a scone, you get sweet foods because it- Because you, you have those cravings. <laughs> like, yeah, you have a craving, you you feel elevated for like- A hot 30 second. minutes the most, yeah. And it's like, and then you crash again. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, now I have to, and you start the cycle over again. So mm -hmm. that was the cycle that I was in. Cause I work a lot and, and I don't even know if you even realized it because I think overall you kind of felt like you weren't like sitting around eating ding dongs and Twinkies all day, right? right? Like overall, you felt like you were trying to make healthy choices. Like you were trying to be quote unquote healthy, but we, there's two major pieces, right? There's one piece where we do these like sort of subconscious behaviors that happen and then we kind of let it go and kind of forget because we think it's not the norm, mm -hmm. but it actually probably is more of the norm than we tend to admit. Right. So I think there's that. And then two, the, even the concept of eating quote unquote healthy, as you know, wearing a continuous glucose monitor, you can spike your blood sugar all day long and be, be eating quote unquote healthy. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because one of the, the diets I was, was recommended to me was eating be all, all vegetarian. But now that I know all this, I mean, you, you give, you gave me the science reason behind it. My brain was like going, well, how could that, that wasn't any healthier for me. Yeah. I'm eating more leafy greens, but. Which is great, but. <laughs> right. But it, it would have a piece. Me, right. And I still had acid reflux. I still right. wasn't sleeping good. And so this, when you say this is the last piece of nutrition advice you ever need, I, I was doubtful that first that first week of the challenge because I was like yeah well anybody could say that but I'm a firm believer because I am living proof like I live it out every day I'm walk I went from being a pain to barely walk I can lift up to eight pounds now which sounds doesn't sound fantastic but I started at two pounds oh, wow. um I'm looking forward to I mean my why was my grandson Mm -hmm. because my mother passed away she was in her early 70s and she was overweight and she had all she had some pre-existing medical conditions but she was always dieting always dieting and well, and one thing often leads to another right and so many of us are malnourished we're not absorbing nutrients we have massive inflammation and none of us really realize that we just think eat less move more I right. just have to put myself in a deficit. I have to stop eating. Right. And she should have been able to see her great grandson. Yeah. And oh. there's, there's no way that's going to be my story. Like that has become my banner. <laughs> I love that. People are like, why are you eating this way? Because I want to be able to pick my great grandchildren mm -hmm. up off the floor. And I just spent the weekend watching my, my grandson so I was like thinking in my head, all right, he weighs roughly about 35 pounds. So it's like trying to like measure, 
But now with all my back problems and all the pain, I got on the floor. I was wrestling with him. I could pick him up from a standing position. I could squat now. Oh been, my gosh. I know. I could, I've been practicing because I've been doing stretching as well as um, lifting weights and, and, and walking. I'm walking twice a day now for tw uh, roughly 20 minutes a piece in the morning and then in the afternoon, the afternoon ones for stress. And, um, but I've been practicing standing up. I could stand up without bracing myself on anything, which is huge. That is huge for me. I haven't been able to do that in I don't know how long. And oh my gosh, it's all because it wasn't like you said, here, do this and this, follow this program and you'll be this, follow this menu. I've been on those that didn't, you're just like, these are the reasons why. And I went, okay, yeah. I made the decisions myself. And I'm still yes. I really wanted to structure for you, for everyone, this, it, it's like this, you know, I talk about the guardrails in a bowling lane, right? Like I'm going to put the gutter guards down. I'm going to show you how to bowl. But at the end of the day, you got to put your own spin on it. You get to choose the bowling ball. You got to choose the, 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 I don't know where, what bowling alley you're going to bowl in. Right. And you get to make all these choices and it, it's a hard concept to be able to really understand until you go through it. And that's where all of my years as an educator and a behavior specialist, as well as nutrition, I don't know any other way to teach. And so it made sense to me, but I didn't realize how different that was for all of you until after, you know, a few clients went through and they're like, whoa, but it's hard to put your finger on exactly what makes it so different. Right. right. And it's not just, oh, if you do this, then the pounds will come off. Right. Cause I've done that pounds came off, then came back on. And it felt like too, in that diet roller coaster for every 10 pounds I lost on a diet, the minute I went off the diet, I would gain twice as much back. Well, and the concept was your offer on. Right. Exactly. And what is and this I, life like now for you? It's like living. Mm. I have no way to explain it other than living. I don't step on a scale. I don't have a scale in my house. Well, I have a little, <laughs> I, I measure some of my food because I'm still trying to understand like all your portions or right. how it works for you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's it. Like I have my workout plan. I write it in my planner. I just do the things that are now part of my life, but even on vacation, because vacation was always really scary for me because, and even going to visit family, it's scary for me because I, I feel like I have no control. Like I'm going to, there's going to be part of me that has no control, but the reality is I have complete control because I get to decide what I put in my body and whether or not it's this or that it's not good or bad. It's either feeding one thing or feeding, you know, feeding my soul or feeding my body. Um, and I feel great. I have 10 tons more energy than I had before. Um, I stopped drinking coffee entirely and I'm, wow. the, I'm such a coffee drinker that I have a t-shirt that says <laughs> you even have the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> coffee makes me less murderous, <laughs> a murdery. <Yeah. laughs> um, and that was like my biggest concern on the, on yeah. When you were like, because in the very beginning, I ask you to practice the discipline of declining of certain things that we know can be problematic in our bodies. And you were willing to try that for a little while. And I was like, you can absolutely go back to coffee. This is going to be completely your choice, but coffee is one of the most acidic things we can put in our body. And if we can get our body to an alkaline state, it's, it's just going to start a new relationship on a new foundation. And you, I do coffee every single day. I do a cup of coffee every day. It's a, it's not high acid, you know what I mean? And it's, it's I've got some mushrooms in it and all that kind of stuff, but you chose not to incorporate coffee. And I, I never told you, you couldn't. Right. It was a choice because I realized it wasn't, it wasn't giving me anything. Wow. It was, I could have a cup of green tea or a cup of herbal tea and I got the same kind experience. of comfort. It was yeah, more of like that experience. a hot thing. Cause I was the type of person that would go to Disney Orlando and have a piping hot mocha in a hot, in a hot Florida <laughs> right. sun. Yeah. I like the, I like the hot, like it's just, it has to be hot. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not, and I've had some coffee since, but only to realize it doesn't taste the same. It doesn't have any real benefit for me. Um, other than something that could be 
replaced by something much healthier. I mean, green tea is, is just full of things that are better for me. Yeah. And, and I love that you, you based on an education, I would say, I'll never tell you what you can and can't have, but I'm going to educate you and you get to make decisions for yourself. And everybody's story is different about what they've decided. And I think that's like a big part of the, the battle, giving yourself enough, me believing in you that you can make these decisions, but more importantly, you believing in yourself that you know what decision you're making and why you're, why you're making it. I always say confidence doesn't come from meeting a goal. Confidence comes when you know what you're doing is right. And you're still working towards continuing to up level and you always will. That's why I want everyone in our group to be working with us for a lifetime. Lifetime membership to me is like a non-negotiable because, you know, in like five years from now, when tragedy hits or your something happens in your life, you got to be able to have some, your, your people that understand this, because I don't think a lot of people really understand this experience unless you've been through it. Right. Well, and I wouldn't have, and that's mm -hmm. why the challenge was so good because it was, a, I was surrounded by coaches and clients too, because I knew they were in, in the audience, but I was just really, really honing in and hearing what you have to say and really looking at why am I really doing this? Mm -hmm. Like I've had why, I mean, why is it's a, it's a coaching technique. Like what's your why? And I've had why right. I've t-shirts that say things <laughs> like that, Right. but to really dig in and to say, and even up level that why in the program mm -hmm. to my great grandchildren, mm -hmm. because that, yes. or it was just about, you know, my grandson and right. I want to see his kids. I want to pick up his kids and that, and that I only got because of going to the co Friday coaching and by, I went to, um, the power hour. You started like, your power hours, right? Cause in yeah. month four, you unlocked the power yeah. hours. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So I went to the one in June and mm -hmm. that, and we talked about working out and I was like, and just hearing everybody talk, I was like, Ooh, and I know I was like kind of at the end of mine. So I was still on my honeymoon. So I'm like, I'm doing all these things. And I was like feeling really good about myself, but in that challenging myself to say, okay, I need to add an extra walk in and I need to add, you know, a kettlebell and I need to add, like, there's just things I need. You to were add. figuring it out. You, you're becoming your own nutrition coach. Yep. That is the goal. So, uh, it, it's so amazing because not only are you feeling better, but what I always say is who else benefits when you figure this out? So that's sort of my last question for you. What, who else has benefited from you investing in yourself, saying yes to yourself, showing up to yourself in this way? Because a lot of women think it's selfish to spend money on themselves to, I mean, we're not talking about getting your nails done here, right? But to have, I mean, you had to be in the portal every day, 15 to 20 minutes to learn. Uh, so it could really look like this is all for you, but it's a, I have a sneaky little secret that this really isn't about you. As much as I care about you, I really believe that women that dig in and engage are changing their family tree. So who else benefited from, or is benefiting from your, your journey? I would say everybody in my personal radius and even some of my clients, because I, when something works for me, I, I'm not shy about talking about it. Mm -hmm. So most immediately my husband who has struggled with his weight since he, um, when he was in the military, they were definite do's and don'ts and yep. strict. When he got freedom, he consumed all the things and he's got some health conditions too that I think are definitely systemic from his weight. Um, and was told by somebody that, oh, just plan to be a widow because of his trajectory. Wow. Yeah, a nutritionist told me that. Well, <laughs> that, that's pretty harsh, but I do tell people it's a math equation. You're, going, right. you're either regressing or progressing. And if right. you're going in one direction, you will get to a certain, th there's an answer that happens at the end of every equation. <laughs> Right. And so just sort of expressing to my husband, look, I don't want to be a widow. Like mm. what, this is my journey. I'm not going to force my journey on you. But, and I had to explain about, you know, dinner because the very beginning I was eating a little separately from the family just because Oh yeah, I was trying to change. They're very picky. I have very picky eaters. In my family. <laughs> and so I was trying to like manage myself and, and help them still eat, eat food. Uh, and we've come, we were, we're actually good now, but like everybody's eating the same food pretty much. Yeah. My right. husband doesn't eat vegetables, which is like a thing, but <laughs> he 
baby steps. Uh, So then when I started, I was talking more about my nutrition, my journey and how good I was feeling. He started walking once a day in the evenings. Now he's joined a gym and he's going six times a week. Wow. Uh, I know my, my young, my middle son and I have always walked. Uh, That's just kind of what we do is our thing in the afternoons. Um, But he started thinking about his food. He's autistic. And so he's just been really like contemplating if I eat this over that. He and some of those new snacks or you know food that I'm bringing in that's gluten free and all that stuff. He's like, oh, this is really so much better. Like I don't feel like that crash after the sugary stuff. I love it. I love it. Which has been awesome. My youngest, who's 17, has started walking every day, and wow, started wanting to lift weights. Um, so that's just my the people in my household. Is that amazing? How you're just it's permeating, and I think that that's what's just so powerful. And then when and if they get to this point where they want more, need more, are searching for more, who do they who, who they know who to go to? Right. Because I've also talked to my son, my oldest, who was told by his doctor, it's not a matter of if it's when you become diabetic because of his family history. So he's made some changes, uh, his wife and my, and I was laughing on our trip because I said, my toddler grandson and I pretty much have the same diet. Like we were eating whole food. Yes. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and then we changed that somewhere in there. <laughs> We each had yeah. a pouch because I got these applesauce pouches and they, it was kind of funny, but, um, but the, it is it, such a good thing. Like I yeah. made him, oh, the protein muffins. Like there was an email that went out, the applesauce protein muffins. I made yeah. them. My grandson loves those. Um, so, so I good. bought a bunch, uh, cause they're, so they're, it's all natural, healthy stuff yeah. for him. And, yeah. and balancing his blood sugar. Right. And then I talk I spent a lot of time talking to my dad because I really wanted him to understand you know why I was doing this it wasn't personal it wasn't an attack against the way we've eating it was just with him I have to go a little bit slower but yeah I did point out because when he was in his 40s he started bike bicycling he started working out he was in the greatest shape of his life and when we were talking he reflected and said I've outlived my parents by wow. like 17 years. Wow. Like their age, not just. Yeah. Yeah. He's lived longer than them. Yeah. Because he, I, and he's like, it's because I did all that working out. And I said, yes, <laughs> that's exactly why I'm doing this now. Like it's about lo- longevity. It's about living. Yes. But what do you, how do you say it? Living dying later younger <laughs> yeah dying later younger yeah, yeah. and that's and just- and you know the time to repair the roof is when it's sunny outside and for you honestly it wasn't that sunny right. let's be honest you had a cloudy day when you decided you were going to change the roof and right. it could have started raining storming hurricane at any time i'm so grateful you did because our bodies are amazing and it's turning itself around the later and the longer we do this, it's just the harder and harder it is to to recover from this in the way that we really want to be able to live this 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 life that we have imagined for us, especially with our grandkids and our great grandkids. So I'm so proud of you. And I know your family is proud of you too. Am I right? Yes. Well, and the really amazing thing too is I was popping Tylenol and Motrin, like ibuprofen regularly. Like as much as I drink water at this point. Wow. And I decided at the beginning, I was going to stop every, I was stopping all, all everything. Cause I wanted to be, I wanted to be sure. Like I wanted to make sure that what I was feeling was yeah. natural. Real. Yeah. Uh, haven't gone back. Haven't had any need for any pain medication. I used to get horrible headaches. Now when I get a tension headache, I use my magnesium. Um, mm-hmm. It's all, it's all it's all good. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm so, I can't wait for, have you been to the doctor since? I have not, but I have an appointment coming up. Oh, I can't doctor. wait to hear about that. Yeah. I was pre-diabetic when I went in and even when I went on the CGM, cause I went in a, a month later, mm-hmm. uh, on that, my blood sugars were already in the normal, like for my age range. Yep. So yep. that's the 
Um, your doctor is going to be like, what are you doing? Because they don't see that. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Jen. This has been amazing. And I think one of the things that also who else benefits everybody listening. And that's why it's so important for me to be able to share these stories because it gives hope. It gives inspiration. It, it shows what's possible. Uh, when you even, even like when you said you did the, the, the challenge, you started noticing a difference just with what you were learning there. So we're, Wherever you are in your health, there is a place for you to start and to keep moving in a direction because we don't stay the same. We regress or we progress. And so this is super inspirational for everyone. So Jen, thank you so much. Keep going. I can't wait to hear about all of the wins. I want to hear about your doctor's appointment and as you continue to lift heavier and heavier weights. You're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. This program is amazing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm I'm always so humbled when women like make the decision to trust me. And then I feel like I have to showcase you and be like, see, <laughs> see, <laughs> I told you so. Uh, but really all of the credit really truly does go to you because it's like, I always joke, Amazon comes to my house just about every day. But if I don't open up those packages, I don't benefit from any of my, you know, same day delivery. You opened up the package. You decided to bowl. That was completely, totally on you. We gave you the roadmap, the support, but at the end of the day, you still got to pick up that bowling ball and you did. So congratulations. You're just killing it. All right, everyone. Put in the comments what you're taking from this, what your next step is going to be and recognizing that, yeah, food freedom is absolutely possible. Thanks, Jen.